Xi Jinping and the Communist Party in China. Bubak in London, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, and thank you for taking my call, and thank you to your guest. Uh, I just like to uh, ask your guest that in 1941, President Roosevelt uh, helped the Russians because they, he wanted to deny Hitler the vast natural resources of Russia because if Russia, uh, if uh, Germany, Nazi Germany had access to that, then they would, uh, he would have considered them undefeatable. Right now in 2020, it seems we are gifting the Chinese the vast natural resources of Russia. So my question is, what can Biden administration do to deny Chinese easy access to the vast natural resources of China, uh, otherwise they become also undefeatable. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. Um, as I was saying, yeah, earlier that China will be a willing buyer of, of Russia's natural resources in the future. Uh, these things do take time to organize. You can't build a pipeline overnight, et cetera, et cetera. But in the future, looking forward, say five or 10 years, you can see China stepping into that void that's left by the sanctions and the, the cutting off of Russian gas and oil and things like that. I don't know what you know we can do about that per se. We're not going to bomb the pipeline or something that's built uh, through Siberia down to China. But it would you know people have speculated couldn't couldn't we try to pry China away from Russia? Couldn't we say to China, look, you don't really want to be allied with this guy. I mean, you want to be in the big league of nations. You don't want to be slumming it with this, uh, you know, sort of incompetent uh, warlord who's who's trying to recreate the Soviet Union. Um, and that's something that maybe American diplomacy could try to do. But the problem is, I think that the one thing that unites Republicans and Democrats in this country is fear of an enmity toward China, right? China is sort of like the big boogeyman on the world stage. Every time Biden talks about the need for new infrastructure or something, it's always framed as because China's, you know, going to eat our lunch if we don't get our act together. So we've sort of put China in this position as the real enemy in the future. And so it makes it sort of hard for us then to go to China and say, hey, why don't we try to find areas of cooperation? Because it just doesn't seem that, that, that in Washington, at least, people are willing to take that step. You even just say the word cooperation and you're sort of seen as a panda hugger or an appeaser. We're talking so, with Ian Johnson. He spent uh, 20 years in China plus as a journalist. He's here to talk about uh, China